Hey guys, today we're going to go over some of the specifics of my homemade CNC plasma cutter. Stay tuned, alright? So here's an overall view of the of the plasma cutter. You can see I got gear reduction on all the axes. Got a large pulley here. A small pulley on the stepper motor. So what it does is it gears it down. Now this pulley and this pulley back here are the same size. So you get the gear, well belt reduction I guess. You get the belt reduction from here to here and then it goes over to there and then these act as idlers and the reason why you need to put these in here let me come around the other side the reason why that needs to go in there is because um, you need a lot of belt wrapping around this this timing pulley so it doesn't slip so you can see how I did the belt arrangement to make that work and these are just uh, roller skate or skateboard bearings. That's all these are. Most of the bearings on here, except for the V-groove bearings, are roller skate bearings. In here, you can see that I have an idler inside there to keep tension on the, the belt reduction. Okay? And to adjust the tension, there's a slot on this plate and a slot on the other plate. So by pushing down on that and then tightening up that bolt, that gives me the tension. See that on the other side there? These here are linear rails that I bought on I bought on eBay. Now eBay is your friend because you can buy a lot of used stuff on eBay, a lot of used machine parts on eBay. And that's where I got this and it came with these these bearing blocks here. And these are Thompson, let's see, what are they called? PB12 open. And what they mean by open is the bottom of this is open. Because if you just put a straight rod here along this, just suspend it on one end and on the other end, there's going to be a lot of flex in it. So you need a... Now, I went with this because it was the simple thing to do. There are other ways to make a lineal rail system. You can use V-groove bearings like this and just use a... A piece of straight iron with a v, with a, a V bearing on on both sides, or like two on one side and one on the other. The overall dimensions of this this will cut a four foot wide sheet by five feet long. Because a lot of a lot of metal comes in. Uh, 4x10 sheets so I can basically cut a half a 4x10 sheet on this now the gear reduction I worked that out with math and you know it's been five years so I don't remember what the reduction ratio is now this y-axis has the exact same gear reduction almost the same configuration exactly the same configuration the same idle pulley setup same idlers over in here. Same setup. These belts are just tied in on this side and on this side. And the way I tension them is I just pull them hard and tighten down the screw. Now you could probably do some kind of tensioner on here. But, you know, this is a down and dirty setup here. 
Now on the Y axis, it's basically the same deal with the belt tied in down on that end and on this end. And you got the same setup on both sides. You got two Y axis motors. And the way they set up, when this is on, see there's a limit switch right here. And there's a limit switch down on this side. Same deal. Okay. And that's how I square up my gantry. This gets squared up every time. Every time I zero, zero it up, it squares it up. Now, if it's not cut and square for some reason, I can adjust these stops. And these stops have a little taper on them. So that gives me height adjustment. The taper gives me height adjustment. And then I have slots here that give me uh, length adjustment. So, and that's how I square it up. And I have the same thing on both sides. Anybody that's played with limit switches, you know you can do all kinds. There's all kinds of tricks you can do. You can bend these a little bit. There's a lot of different ways you can set this up. And they're just, they're just screwed into this, these pillow blocks here. This box beam actually came from a sunroom. And I'll show you what it looks like. This came from a sunroom that I tore down. And you can see here, I have some pieces of it right here in my rack. It's very thin wall, but very rigid. It's light. And then what I did is I got this V track. There's a piece of it here. Now this is the V rail. This is the V rail that I used. Okay, and it basically has a little lip here. And what I did is I put four of them on there. Like this. Got one on each corner. And it's riveted. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I got a little bit of flack for riveting these things on. But let me show you how many rivets I put in it. It's riveted every two inches. See that? I have an air rivet gun. I drilled these all out. Through there, marked it nice. So it's riveted every, this ain't going nowhere, man. If rivets can hold an airplane together, it'll certainly hold this gantry together. This part of the gantry is bolted together. And that gives me a little bit of adjustment in it. It's just a, a small aluminum angle iron bolted to this and bolted to that. Because there, there will, it will happen sometimes when uh, the limit switch doesn't hit right or whatever. And uh, this thing will get cocked a little bit. But it doesn't damage it. Because we resquare it every time. You know, we can resquare it every time we, we use this thing. Now this material, I was going to put hard metal sides on, on the side of this, but this thing is, I can break this thing down in about 20 minutes and move it. That's how easy this thing is to move. This frame is very lightweight. It's only inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing. And this material is fire blanket material. I bought a roll of it, and it just wraps around the bottom, and that's to keep the air confined inside. Now I have a blower here, and boy, I wish it was written in in CFM, but it's not. But it's 83 cubic meters per minute. This thing provides lots of suction. I turn that on, and it it blows out and that's why it's near the garage door because I can actually connect a hose to that 
and blow it out into the yard. And that creates down suction. And that's why I have this blanket here. So when I'm cutting, let's say if I'm just cutting a small piece, you know, I want to direct all the down air through the part that I'm, I'm cutting. And it works really, really good. I mean, I had this thing set up in the basement in my other house. And, uh, you know, my wife wouldn't tolerate any kind of smoke or, or dust coming up the stairs. So I'm going to try to have links in the description. Some of this stuff's going to be hard to find because, like I said, it's been four years. Pretty sure I got all the, all the timing belts and the timing pulleys from SPI. And uh, I think that's a company out of New Jersey. And they're really good. They're really, really good. This table also has torch height control, automatic torch height control. Now you can see my torch holder here, very basic. These are, uh, these are just pipe clamps for uh, running conduit along a concrete wall or a wood wall that's all these are these are conduit clamps you can see the V groove wheels I got here and I used another piece of that V V rail here this V rail was pretty inexpensive because it, it's small it's very small the V bearings were kind of expensive and I believe I got these from VXB bearing but what I wanted to show you here for setting the torch height, the Z height, or the Z height, there's a limit switch right there. And when this touches, it tells the machine where the zero is. So this gantry will come down, the Z, the Z will come down, touch the plate, trip this, and that, and that tells you where the, uh, the Z height is. And then there's an offset that you have to enter in uh, Mach 3. There's a little spring here. That's pretty much the only thing that, and that trips the limit switch right there. This linear rail I also bought on eBay this was surplus now you don't have to do it this way when I built this a lot of these uh, CNC parts these cheap CNC parts that exist today did not exist then um, you know with cheap 3d printers and 3d printer kits and now you can buy you know good good linear screws and you can buy good rails you could actually make something with a couple of straight rods, rails, and, and some uh, rail bearings for this setup. Um, this actually cost me quite a bit, even used. This was probably close to 100 bucks. You can get this done for probably $15 today. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Subscriptions help me out a lot to place and search. Also, if you have any questions about this plasma table, I mean anything, put them down in the comments below. Um, and that'll give me some fuel to uh, make another video based on your suggestions and your questions. Also, click the bell icon. There's a little bell next to the subscribe button. Click on that so you get notified of all my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching.